Good morning. This is Outside the Classroom. Earth Day is today. It's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm meteorologist and science teacher Ryan Miller. We're here as a service to you to help you out, to keep that learning process going, and to give you some things to do at home that would certainly allow us to celebrate Earth Day but do it in a way that we can learn something new. So good morning, we're gonna get right to it. We've got lots of great stuff to share with you today. Folks from the Arlington Career Center have sent us a wonderful video. We can't wait to share that. And we've got lots of things for you to showcase and share with us today on this 50th Earth Day. We're gonna look at the words of the day very quickly. And we have three words on this Earth Day that we would love to see you spell out practice spelling, and uh, send us a picture of you doing that. Observe is our first word. So on this happy Earth Day, the first word is observe. R-V-E. Sorry, my handwriting is not too great. The first word is observe. The second word on this Earth Day is adjust. And so when we think about Earth Day, and we think about how we can celebrate Earth Day, it involves being able to adjust. And then the third word of Earth Day here for us on the show is redirect. You're going to see these words show up today. Redirect. All of these words have a lot to do with what we're talking about this week on Outside the Classroom, which is adaptation. If you observe and you adjust and you redirect, those, those words can help you to try and adapt and deal with adaptation. And adaptation is certainly a core theme and a present idea in Earth Day. We've got some really cool videos that were sent to us here over the last bit of time on our chime in section of the website. In fact, if you go to WJLA.com, and uh, on that website, you can go on our website, you can go to the outside the classroom section of it, and we've got lots of resources for you here. But Chime In is one of the very top links that you can click on, and that's a great way, an easy way to share things with us. And speaking of sharing, we have several sections. The Show Us Something Good section of the website is fantastic. Uh, on our Chime In, we've got pages and pictures of students and staff. This is Oxon Hill High School celebrating its virtual week. So we've got those folks that are welcome or that have been sharing with us. Uh, Patricia Salau, our father bringing um, some food, it looks like, to the folks that need it in the assisted living center. That's great. Chris Ream taking a walk in the neighborhood, and there's a beautiful picture uh, of a bird. I don't know my birds, but we are going to talk about birds here in just a moment. And lots of folks have shared with us wonderful things. We have our own section on Outside the Classroom on Chime In. Please let us know what we can do as a resource to provide resources. Courses, I should say to you or if you just want to show us a neat picture on this Earth Day something happening outside it's beautiful out here around the Washington DC area but please let us know it's also hat week here and our theme for the week is to try and wear a neat crazy funky favorite comfortable hat that you can potentially uh, show us and so I've got my hat on for a couple of reasons number one because it's hat week and number two because it is is cold this morning. We're in the 40s and 30s in many locations. Even though it looks nice outside, this hat is certainly warranted and so is the jacket. If you want to stay in touch with us, we're on Facebook. Please, if you're on Facebook, let us know. Say hi. Uh, interact with us. Ask me questions or ask us questions. Um, or just simply show us a neat picture. What beautiful setting do you see on this Earth Day outside of your window? So please, on Facebook, let's get right to the contact. The way to contact us here on Outside the Classroom. It's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's Instagram, all things social media. You can certainly let us know um, and share with us anything. Chime In is also the, uh, the source I just talked to you about, but please on Twitter or Instagram, those are my hashtag, I should say those are my uh, Twitter handle and Instagram handles, so please keep in touch. And uh, the fun thing that I'd like to get to right now is state birds. We have been talking about birds as well, and we've been trying to collect information 
on the state bird of each state in the U.S. And we have had several people be able to interact with us and let us know what the state birds are. If you are on Facebook and watching us right now, would you please let us know what the state bird of Tennessee is? We do not know what the state bird of Tennessee is, but the other states that you see on this map right here, and we're going to pull this up and show you, the states that are shaded in are states where we have actually gotten uh, people to let us know what the birds are for those states. So we have several that we need, more than several, we've got many that we need to, uh, to fill in, and we're after the state bird of Tennessee. Please let us know interact with us, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, website, you've got them all, and we would love to hear from you. So Earth Day, we were trying to come up with some ideas on things to do to celebrate and recognize Earth Day. One of the very important things that I like to try and teach, and I'm an environmental science teacher, is the idea of connecting people with nature, people and the environment. And we live lives right now that don't necessarily relegate us to spending lots of time outside. So how can you conserve, protect, um, and interact with the environment nature if you don't know it? So we've put together a little package here on the benefits of spending time outside and the benefits both from a medical and psychological standpoint of spending time in nature. Have you ever gone for a walk or a hike and as soon as you get outside you feel that sense of, ah. Well it turns out scientific research indicates that there are medical benefits, actual medical benefits for spending time and spending a certain amount of time in nature. Researchers both here in the United States and overseas have found a magic number for the amount of time you need to spend outside to get some medical benefits from being in nature. It's 120 minutes per week, two hours. If you can dedicate two hours of your time, and let's face it, we all have a lot of time on our hands right now to be outside. You don't have to be exercising or hiking. Just spend some time outside and get some medical benefits. And those benefits include a lower blood pressure. Your hormones, your stress hormones will actually get reduced. It turns out that spending time in nature from a scientific standpoint reduces the aggressive behavior of humans. You can get a boost in your self-esteem by spending time in nature. Your attention levels can be stronger and spending time in nature from a learning perspective has been found to reduce symptoms of ADHD. As we think about Earth Day, we should think about the time we spend outside and increase the amount of time that we spend in natural settings. There's medical and psychological benefit and benefit for all of our communities. I'm science teacher and meteorologist Ryan Miller. Welcome back to Outside the Classroom. It's a beautiful Earth Day around the Washington DC region. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you. We have now figured out what the state birds of Tennessee are. Thank you to Jasmine and Ginny. Uh, we've got the Northern Mockingbird and the Northern Bob White and RGB as well. Thank you for sending that information. So we've got Tennessee off the list. Let's keep going. How about Mississippi? What is the state bird of Mississippi. Please interact with us on Facebook or any way you can get that information to us. We would appreciate it. It's beautiful. We're trying to get people outside to enjoy and at least from the perspective of your yard or around where you live, respective of the uh, times we're living in right now, it's important to make those connections to, na to uh, nature. I have some teaching colleagues that have been kind enough and Aaron and Annie Vincent and Aaron Conley uh, Hannon, if you could please uh, watch this video. It's beautifully done and put together. Their class at the Arlington Career Center uh, was kind enough to put and share together with, uh, put together and share with us a video of all of the students in their class putting um, and doing some things to celebrate and to recognize Earth Day. Paul and Emma and Sarah Elizabeth and Ben and Audrey 
These five incredibly awesome students at the Arlington Career Center were really into, into uh, the idea of Earth Day and celebrating Earth Day, and we can't thank them enough for all of the contributions they have made, whether it's recycling, cleaning up litter, trying their best to, to get the garden going here. Those are all wonderful examples of Earth Day, and thank you to the Arlington Career Center, a part of the Arlington Public Schools, for sharing that video with us. We appreciate appreciate it. So let's talk about another thing that we can celebrate on Earth Day. That's trees. We're blessed with lots of different trees all around us and there are so many benefits to trees that perhaps you have never necessarily figured out or understood. Let's take a look. Here's a story on the idea and benefits that trees can provide to us. With Earth Day in mind, let's celebrate the Earth by looking at the benefits that trees provide to us as humans and to the environment. The benefits of trees include removing pollution from the atmosphere, pollution from using fossil fuels. Trees help to cut down on noise pollution from roads, and so that's why we see lots of trees along highways and roads. Trees give us oxygen. In fact, 20% of the world's oxygen is coming from the Amazon rainforest alone. Trees help to stabilize the soil. They help to prevent soil erosion, and that in turn can help to clean our drinking water. We've all been under a tree when it's a really hot day. The cooling effect of trees, not only for humans, but for our buildings and houses, is a valuable resource to help us save money on saving electricity and from air conditioning reduction. Trees help to reduce crime. In fact, studies indicate that crime reduction from trees in urban areas is significant. And trees benefit wildlife. They give us habitat and they allow animals and other creatures to live by giving us tremendous amounts of diversity in our habitats around where we live. So thinking about Earth Day, let's focus on the benefits that trees provide us and celebrate and plant and care for the trees all around where we live. I'm science teacher and meteorologist Ryan Miller. And so with trees on the mind, there are lots of things that we can consider when we're trying our very best to tend and care for the trees all around us. But also, trees can give us food. I planted this peach tree here a few weeks ago. I picked it up at the store and there are peaches that are starting to grow on this tree. Little tiny peaches with some peach fuzz here. And um, last night the temperatures were so cold that I was worried that the frost at 32 degrees or below would end up harming the peaches on this tree. So I covered the tree up to protect the peaches that are growing on here and to make sure that those peaches aren't lost to the frost. And it looks like we're good to go and I can't can't wait for these peaches to grow and then turn them into a pie maybe in a July or August. I love peach pie. It's my favorite thing. So some other favorite things of mine. We've got some really amazing trees that are around us and trees can provide us cool conditions. They can give us oxygen. They can keep our soil here. But there are three pictures of trees that I'd like to share. These are amazing. These are what I call my favorite trees. And we have uh, a tree here that in, in my hometown of Akron, Ohio is called the signal tree. And it's believed that the Native American tribes that lived in this region of Akron uh, or of Ohio several Several hundred years ago used this tree to give directions to certain locations and certain paths that people needed to take. So it was almost like the GPS device of the time. We've got other trees here including the Civil War tree that has been present here in Arlington. This tree has been around and so from a historical perspective this tree is a witness to so much history in the sense that it's been around for several hundred years and just the the comfort you get from being under a big tree on a nice hot day or the beauty and the, the amazing aesthetic component, the beauty of a tree when you're around and be able to take a hike. So there are many benefits to trees. We're going to come back and take a look at how you can plant a couple of trees, including uh, some bigger ones if you wanted to, but eventually over time you can see the magic of these trees working carbon out of the atmosphere, turning it into the tree itself, and that is a phenomenal thing. Thing to celebrate and to recognize on this 50th Earth Day.
Good morning and once again, this is Outside the Classroom and I'm Ryan Miller. We appreciate you tuning in, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're watching us and streaming us online or if you're in the DC area here and you have us on TV, we do appreciate you watching and we're here to try and give you some ideas of things that you can do at home. Uh, one of the two themes that we've been talking about with this Earth Day in mind is establishing a connection with nature, getting outside and getting to know or reacquaint yourself with nature and the environment. One of the interesting studies I've recently noticed is that and noted uh, teaching environmental science is that there's benefit to actually working with soil and not using gloves. There's a certain type of microorganism, a bacteria in the soil that science has found and researchers have found if you actually get your hands in the soil and work in the soil, you expose your body, your skin to this bacteria. And it's a good thing because not all bacteria is bad. And the soil and by interacting with it will allow you to get interactions with that bacteria and that bacteria can help to stimulate some of the positive hormones in our body and things like serotonin that can enhance our mood make us feel better have us uh, give us a little bit more uh, ability to handle and deal with anxiety so being outside is an incredibly important thing for our human health and to recognize the environment now with trees in mind the other theme that we've been talking about here's an interesting and easy activity go on a tree hunt and what I mean by that is go look for saplings baby trees they can be all over and these baby trees especially as they start to grow right now you have to do some digging and looking they'll start to show up and this is one of the ways where you can take and find a sapling and try and transplant it so that it grows into a big, gorgeous, beautiful tree. So I've been going through my garden right here and I have always tried to let things grow and not necessarily take out all of the weeds, but I do have an oak tree right here that just started to grow. So let's dig around here and can you remember what does an oak tree give off in the fall that would allow for a baby oak tree to grow? Can you think about that? Well, I'm going to dig around here, and as I dig, I found that there is my baby oak tree, and there was an acorn that at one point was fallen into this soil and gave us this little baby sapling. So I'm gonna put it in this dish right here, and I was careful with the roots. I don't want that uh, mouse-eared chickweed there getting in. Um, I'm as careful with the roots. I'm gonna put it in here, give this some water, and then I'm gonna try and find a place where this baby oak tree can end up growing. And so that's an idea. Look for some saplings. Go on that tree hunt and identify some plants that may be out of place. Perhaps it's a tree. And then you can certainly go and try to transplant that and grow another tree from that one little plant that you saw on your tree hunt. My colleague Rachel Kay has a look at Earth Day and looking at it from a different perspective. We'll take it away, Rachel. Meteorologist Rachel Kay here as we prepare to celebrate Earth Day this year. I have a few fun trivia questions for you to see how well you know your Earth Day history. Starting with, when was Earth Day founded? Now, if you've been paying attention and you're able to do a little bit of simple math, this is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which means that the answer for when was Earth Day founded would be C. That was back in 1970. Next question, which of the following coincides with or was kind of a result of the first Earth Day? A, the creation of the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. B, the Clean Air and Water Acts. C, the Endangered Species Act. Or D, all of the above. If you guessed D, all of the above, you're right. Those all coincided with or were a result of the very first Earth Day. Next up, how many countries participate? Is it just the US? Is it more? Well, the correct answer here is D. There are over 190 countries that participate in Earth Day. It is arguably considered the largest secular holiday celebrated around the world. Next question, what is the theme for this Earth Day? Earth Day 2020, is it A, action on climate change, B, end plastic pollution, C, trees please, or D, green cities? Now, all of these have been themes in the past, but the theme for this year is A, action on climate change. Are we in break now? 
Did that, uh... So we've got the benefits of spending time outside, the benefits that trees can provide to us. We've looked at some Earth Day history and learned the state birds of Tennessee. One question remains for uh, this Earth Day show, and that is, what is the state bird of Mississippi? If you're watching us on Facebook or perhaps any uh, streaming online, whatever you're doing, if you can please let us know what the state bird of Mississippi is, that'd be great. Here are some ways to contact me and to contact us on the show. We are on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at Miller underscore weather. I am also on Twitter at Ryan Miller underscore WX. We have our Facebook stream going. We have our live stream from the website. And of course, please visit us on Outside the Classroom. Uh, the website on WJLA.com. Chime in is also a wonderful source for you to share and let us know what you're doing to celebrate Earth Day. Earth Day involves us changing and adapting the way that we can certainly live and to try and focus our efforts to preserve all of the beauty and the nature that surrounds us and to accept and realize that all of these things that we have are certainly beneficial to us. Thanks for joining us here. We're going to have more when we return. This is the Earth Day edition of Outside the Classroom. I'm science teacher and meteorologist Ryan Miller. Good morning, I'm meteorologist and science teacher Ryan Miller. It is the 50th Earth Day. Today is April 22nd. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here today to try and recognize the benefits that we get from our planet and how we can do our planet better and some of the things that we can easily undertake to try and recognize, to connect with nature, and to most importantly, conserve it. Uh, we're going to also talk about a couple of other things. It's a fun week here. It's hat week on Outside the Classroom. We're asking anyone that's wearing their favorite hat or a funky hat or any type of hat, maybe it's comfortable. I'm wearing this because it's cold outside to share their photos of their hats with us. Speaking of sharing, we've got some really cool pictures that were sent to us by some colleagues of ours here in the ABC7 uh, newsroom. First of all, let's start with uh, Peggy. Peggy was a uh, photographer here at ABC7, uh, and she at one time um, worked incredibly hard to do lots of different packages with one of our other colleagues, Sam Ford. But Pe uh, Peggy Gilgannon, she sent us this picture of her hat. And thank you, Peggy, for watching, most importantly. And second, thank you for sharing your wonderful hat. You look beautiful. It's good to see your smiling face, Peggy. Thank you. And then Sam Ford and his wife, Gloria, Really nice hats there, Sam and Gloria. Thank you for sharing those photos with us too. And if you have any photographs of you wearing a hat that you love, if you have uh, your favorite comfortable hat, whatever you need um, or whatever you have, that would be wonderful to see your photographs. And please, chime in is a great way to show and send those photographs to us. Let's take a look at a couple of things here today. We are looking at some words. We've got certainly some uh, things that are related to Earth Day. We are working on spelling observe today. Take a picture, spell that out or a video, let us know. Adjust is our second word of the day. And our third word of the day is redirect. So observe, adjust, 
and redirect are the words of the day. And please spell those out and let us see you show those to us. I wanted to show you a couple of other hats that were sent our way. And if you go to Chime In, it's at WJLA.com. Chime In is a great way to show us some of those pictures of things that you're doing. This is Rachel Kay, my colleague and meteorologist, who's doing us a, a favor here and doing our video. Corey in Manassas, Corey Perry. Seems to be a Broncos fan, but I'll tell you what, those aren't the Denver Broncos. That's the Western Michigan Broncos. Corey, thanks for sending that picture of your hat to us here at Outside the Classroom. So please interact with us. Keep us keep in touch. If you have a question or an idea that you'd like to share with us, we would love to see and hear from you. I am also here as an 18 year veteran uh, teaching in the classroom. I am still teaching and uh, hope to be back in the classroom at some point very soon. Um, but I would be glad to help you out with an activity or a lesson or anything that I can do to provide you with some educational uh, considerations here as we're all outside of the classroom and all in this together. I would love to also share a very special video that was sent to us yesterday. Speaking of connecting with nature and establishing a relationship with nature, check out this video. Hey everybody, happy Earth Day. We're the Bjorklands and we're here to do a little Earth Day activity. We're here to um, work with you on potting some plants for an Earth Day activity. You can see we just have some soil, some cups, some plots, some pots, and some simple plants. So what the girls are going to do is they're going to take the soil and they're going to dump it into the bucket what do you think, or into so? the pot. Well, we've got in. Nice. Good job. Awesome Sophia, job, Sophia. Want to do one more? Annika, here. Do you want me to go get some flowers? Would you like to dig a hole? Here, let me help you dig a hole, okay? We're going to dig a hole. We're going to put some of the extra soil in here, okay? Go ahead. First we dig our we're hole. Dig the hole. Put the extra soil back, and then we're gonna take a flower, and we're going to go ahead, we're gonna drop it in. Then would you like to put your extra soil around it? Great job, Annika. Thank you, Annika. Nice. And there we have a nice little potted plant to help out with the Earth for Earth Day. Smell it, okay, looks beautiful. You know what else I think we need though for uh, for a flower to grow? What? Maybe a little bit of water. Ooh, and I just happen to have some water. So one of your Great favorite job, activities is Annika. to use water. All right, is our plant done? Oh, you're gonna smell the flowers, and then no. that is a great thing to do is to smell yeah. the flowers for Earth Day. Right. We hope you all have a great Earth Day and can do a great fun activity during quarantine just like us. Have a great Earth Day. See you Bye. Later. And thank you to Frankie and Eric and Annika and Sophia. We appreciate the video and the time that you spent to share that activity with us. Earth Day is about planting plants and trees and flowers. Flowers and plants and trees, all of the things that are green and gorgeous outside of this window right here provide us oxygen. They help to make us feel a little bit more calm. And so please show and share any photos that you have or video working outside, spending some time in nature and getting to know nature. We're all adapting in many different ways, adapting to the current situation that we're all involved in, adapting to a different lifestyle, adapting and having to go through adaptation with respect to our schedules and the different hats that we wear, whether it's teaching, parenting, um, working from home. There are lots ways but adaptation is our theme for the week here in the classroom and outside the classroom and adaptation to us involves many different things adaptation is about change but not just change it's about change 
for the better. And as we uh, adapt to and we begin to focus our efforts on dealing with situations, it's all about trying to figure out and do things better. And that is one of the reasons why adaptation is a theme for Outside the Classroom this week. If you would love to share any ideas and definitions that you would have or what you would think of adaptation, we are on WJLA.com. Feel free. You can go and share and show us anything that you want relative to adaptation, relative to uh, anything today. But we love to see something good. And on our chime in section, please feel free. This is uh, Shenandoah Valley here. Robin D'Amico in the Shenandoah Valley near Winchester. Wood ducks. And this year they have 12 wood ducks, two mated pairs and seven suitors. And so we have the wood ducks here in the Shenandoah Valley. Please show us, let us know what you're doing for Earth Day. And please also, if you have a question, let us know how we can help. You want an activity to do today? I am certainly on Twitter or Facebook or certainly on Instagram. We can keep you going here on this Earth Day with an educational activity. Remember folks, it's about learning it's not about necessarily just completing tasks. So show and share and interact with us and we are here from you. We're gonna have a lot more when Outside the Classroom returns in just a moment. Rachel Kay here with a request for you this Earth Day. The Earth Day Network, the U.S. Department of State, and the Wilson Center have all worked together to create this app, the Earth Challenge 2020. It's something that's free to download on any device, and it's a great way to get involved. There are kind of two goals with the Earth Challenge 2020 app. First, to collect data, hopefully billions of reports from all around the world, and that will help to contribute to research and filling gaps in our knowledge. The second goal, of course, to get you at home involved, learning about the environment around you, and hopefully to help build healthier communities. So if we open the app to start, there are two categories, plastic pollution and air quality. So for example, if we click on the plastic pollution category, it says, as a citizen scientist, your journey begins by taking pictures of plastics in the environment. So you can go around the neighborhood, you can do it yourself, you can do it with your kids, I encourage you to get kids involved, and pay attention to where you see that pollution. Take those pictures and then upload them on the app. That will help to contribute to that source of data and also make you just a little bit more aware. Then of course there's the air quality section as well. The goal of this is to take pictures of the sky. A really fun and engaging way to get your kids to pay attention and you might learn a little bit more about the air quality in your region as well. Now moving forward in the future they hope to add things like insect populations, food sources, drinking water, and climate change as well. Citizen Science brought to you through your phones and your devices. Rachel Kay, thank you so much for showing us uh, some ideas here of what we could do to get involved and simply get involved here on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day. I have some other apps that we use uh, in my classroom and that I have talked about before. Again, this is Citizen Science using free applications that you can download and try to collect data that would help researchers and scientists to understand and get better information about how our Earth operates. We've got the Bumblebee Watch. If you see a bumblebee outside, those big bumblebees working through the flowers. Now is a great time of year to see those or any type of bee. The Bumblebee Watch is an application that you can download and spend some time outside with your kids today. Go on a bumblebee hunt and see if you can find any of the bumblebees and take this application. You can take a photo, you can log in, identify the type of bumblebee or bee that you saw, and then you can put that onto a map. They also, uh, they being NOAA, has a marine debris program where you can actually download a marine debris garbage tracker. If you live near a waterway, you can use this application here to try and note where there is pollution. And the idea of mapping out the location of pollution would be to number one, clean it up, and number two, perhaps put a program in place to prevent that pollution 
from getting out. So whether it's watching for bumblebees, the marine debris pr tracker program, we in my classroom actually at Washington Liberty High School in Arlington, we use the GLOBE program and the GLOBE tracking app to keep tabs on where there are mosquito populations all around the school and where we live. So whether you're using applications to identify organisms, but please try your very best to get acquainted with nature. I would recommend that Bumblebee Watch application. Great way to spend some time with your kids. Get outside. You can still use your devices and you can catalog and provide and get us really good information here for anything related to Earth Day. It's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. How can we best serve the environment? What can we do to help the environment? We're here to give you some ideas, some resources. Please share with us any of those resources. Speaking of sharing, we have been asking folks to give us the Let's see, I'll pull this up right now on the old computer. They, we've been asking folks to share with us the state birds of certain states around our region and also around the country. So on the outside the classroom website, not so flattering picture of me from yesterday, all of the resources that we talk about and share with you on camera here are, can be found here at WJLA.com in the outside the classroom, including this map that we put together. This map is our way to keep tabs on all of the different states and the state birds. You can download this if you wanted to print it out at home and have those resources. You can print it out and uh, we can keep tabs on all of the different states. So we can check Tennessee off the list and we're after Mississippi right now. So if you're watching us and uh, you're at home or you're on uh, Facebook or wherever you are um, if you know someone from Mississippi or wanted to look it up we'd love to know what the state bird of Mississippi is right there we'll have more when we return I'm Don McCourt and I teach biology with Ryan Miller and I noticed he was doing adaptations this week and adaptations are my favorite thing to teach in biology and I have um, an experiment that I thought I would share with you today that it's simple you can do it at home and you can look at how different adaptations enable organisms to survive better. So for organisms, adaptations mean they, are, they have different traits and the traits allow them to survive in their environment, whether it's um, hiding from predators or eating food or being able to reach something. So like a giraffe has a long neck to reach the leaves above the heads of the other um, organisms that are eating leaves. So they have a food source to themselves. Dolphins have a flat tail and firm flippers so that they are able to move through the water very quickly to catch their prey. So today what you're going to need for this is a paper plate, hopefully with a ridge on it, and some food sources. So we're going to use black beans, some rice, elbow macaroni or any short little macaroni, and some marbles. For the beaks, you're going to use four different tools. You're going to have a fork, a spoon, a forcep, which I didn't have one, so I made one out of a pair of chopsticks and a piece of paper with a rubber band. And then the last one is you take a piece of tape and you tape down your opposable thumb so that you can only take the food with your four fingers. You put the food on the plate. Every person gets a different tool, so you need four people. Um, or if you're really good with both hands, you can have two people and they're both eating at the same time with the two different tools. You get to eat for 45 seconds. And then after that, um, you count up how many beans each person ate. But there's a rule, you can only take one bean off the plate at a time. So for some tools like the forcep, that might be a little difficult. Um, for your fingers, you can't use your thumb. So you only can use your fingers and you can still only take one, one bean at a time. You can't scoop things off the plate. That's not fair. Um, after you've done that, you can record how many beans each person was able to eat in each round on this um, data table. And then you can graph, because I know we were doing graphing too this week, 
um, you can graph the data onto this graph table here and you can determine which food and which beak go together the best. So which of these tools is best for each of these food sources? I think the marble is going to be the most challenging for you. That's it. Hope you have some fun. And that was Dawn McCourt. Thank you, Dawn, my colleague at Washington Liberty High School. If you go to the WJLA.com website and click on and go to the section for outside the classroom, the lab that actually goes with that activity, the directions and the paper that you can use and, and print out at home is going to be posted on that section of our website. The adaptations lab, all of the directions, the graph, anything that you would need to get this project going at home or you can modify it in any way. I like to use sometimes when I do something like this instead of uh, marbles or beans, maybe you could use uh, goldfish crackers or anything at the home uh, that would bring and uh, allow your children uh, and the kids you're giving care for give them an idea and an opportunity to get involved so that's one way to stay connected to the environment learn more about it collect some data but I did want to show you one other thing that's been happening we have been spending lots of time at home no doubt about that we've all been wearing different hats no doubt about that but air pollution, because we aren't using airplanes and cars and all types of fossil fuels, air pollution has gone way down as a result of all of us being quarantined and staying at home. Take a look at some of these pictures. This is in New Delhi in India. This is what it usually, look, usually looks like in New Delhi. And this is when uh, we're using lots of fossil fuels, but they've cut down and not allowed people to get outside. Look at the air quality difference in New Delhi. Taking another look at a couple of other places here, I'm going to scroll down through here. This is actually a picture, and this is going to show us some images here of where we had pre and post uh, pollution levels showing up. And take a look right here. You can see back in 1998, oops, sorry. And uh, if we put this into motion, air pollution, no air pollution with a quarantine. So that is one of the other things that's a benefit of spending some time at home. Here is Milan, Italy. You can see the ozone levels and the smog in Milan. And then ultimately, when you move it without air pollution, that's what it looks like. So there are some things changing on the planet for the good. And uh, hopefully we can keep going with good things for the planet here. We're going to try and highlight those on Outside the Classroom. Welcome back. It's Outside the Classroom on this 50th Earth Day. I'm meteorologist and science teacher Ryan Miller. I wanted to thank Jenny and Pamela, Sheila and Leola. They have all checked in and wished a happy Earth Day to us here from Facebook. And if you are watching on Facebook, please let us know. We would love to say hello to you. But Jenny, Pamela, Sheila and Leola, thank you so much for watching us. And please keep up with us. Let us know how we can help you during this time at home and away from the classroom. Earth Day is an important day to recognize that we have tremendous and profound impact uh, on how we treat the environment. And one of the biggest lessons that I try my very best as an environmental science teacher to impart on all of the students that I work with, and one of the most important things I try to stress to them is to remember to never, ever, ever be proud of being ignorant. It's important that you stand and you take a look at the data and you make decisions and then you try your very best to make actions and decisions that you take on real information. Don't ever be proud of not knowing something. Make sure that you are not proud of being ignorant or just putting your head in the sand. That's not how we solve problems. That's not how we fix things. And if I can get you to learn any lesson from us here at Outside the Classroom, it's that. There's so much beauty in nature. And there are so many wonderful things that the environment and nature can do for us. But there are also wonderful and amazing things that we can do for the environment. 
Celebrating Earth Day is more important than just getting outside and taking a picture and posting it. It's about trying to take meaningful action and realizing that there's a lot of positive that can come for us and for the environment if we find simpler and better things to do and to bring us together. Thanks for joining us. I'm meteorologist and science teacher Ryan Miller. On this 50th Earth Day, let us know how we can give you ideas to keep that learning process going at home.